Well. Well. <laughs> I was well reading. Let us all die Mexican. <laughs> uh, I think the best way to get us started in this conversation is um, for you to tell us a bit about your own lives and uh, how is that you came into this room tonight? Ooh. From where you come? How is your family history? I think that's a could be a very good start. Let's, let's begin with you, Jessica. Ah. Oh, I was hoping you'd begin with David. No, 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 no. He was no, busy. No. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I, I looked at David at, at the moment about the tequila because he was very helpful um, with my tequila research. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm very glad he jumped in and said, well, you must say blah, blah. So I did. Well, uh, actually, uh, Jessica had, uh, had a previous experience with tequila. Um, I would say about 17 or 18 years ago when um, I was, I still am working with the Guadalajara Book Fair and I was asked to bring um, some writers um, that, I, that I admired uh, to Mexico. And I had uh, read Dog Eaters, which I thought was a magnif magnificent novel about the underside of what was at that time, I'm sure, a major Asian city, but she presented Quite a, quite a different view of that city. So Jessica was there. Uh, I invited John Retchie. Um, and if you don't know, his, yeah, who's half Mexican. Yeah. Um, I invited uh, Grace Paley, who is not Mexican, but a great writer. Um, Ana Castillo, um, Sandra Cisneros was there with us. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Pines, Richard Elman, and we did drink a lot of tequila, as I remember. <laughs> well, it was um, very kind of you to help me and point something out. Um, but in answer to your question, Claudio, I was born in the Philippines, um, in Manila, uh, raised there until I was 14, um, in a part of Manila that um, has changed quite a bit. It's this beautiful old, well, I still remember it as this beautiful neighborhood called San Santa Mesa. Mm -hmm. um, and I came to the United States, uh, to San Francisco. My parents split up and my mother had a sister in California. So she just sort of impulsively decided that's where we're all going, you know, and we'd never been to the U.S. It was just sort of like, what? Um, and within a week, um, I was yanked out of school and uprooted and my older brothers, you know, were very upset because they were truly um, settled into the life you know, um, and everything was just like, we're going, and we went on this boat, a boat, um, so I'm very fond of ships, and uh, it gives you like 17 days to arrive, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of time to get used to the, the farewell. Um, it was very disruptive, and we ended up in San Francisco, thank God. So um, it was a good place to be, I think, in the late 60s and the 70s. Um, you know, I came of age as a writer there. I started as a poet, and um, at the time, uh, I always knew I wanted to write a novel one day, but it was poetry that kind of, you know, really um, captured me. Um, and uh, the community of writers that were at the time really um, thriving in San Francisco were very generous to me, and as well as with other younger writers. There were no MFAs back then or anything like that. I mean, if you wanted to be a writer, you just read a lot of books and you got your education that way and you hung out with older writers um, and hoped that some of that would rub off on you, you know. Um, and some of them were really important mentors in my life. But there was a point in the 70s, I'd been to New York a couple of times and I really love the energy. It was terrifying and intimidating. At the same time, it was also wonderful. And so I decided I would move here. And I've been here since 1977. So I've seen New York through a couple of, you know, interesting changes. Yes, and which is one of the themes in, in the, the novel. new yeah, yeah. novel. So that's a little bit of... And, uh, oh, how am I coming here tonight? Because... Well, I think you answered the question very yeah. much. Uh, David, you remind me of another great writer, uh, also from New York, connected with New York, Jose Coser. 
And once Jose uh, told me that he thought that his destiny was to be, I mean, somehow the connection with Cuba, because his father was from Poland, a Jew from Poland, who came to Cuba. Then he was born there, right. and he left Cuba for the United States, and uh, her, her daughter, his daughters were born in the United States. So the only connection uh, in his family with Cuba was himself. So, uh, and uh, somehow, reading your novel and, and knowing your story, it, it bring to my mind the, the memory of, uh, of, of this story uh, by Coser. Why don't you complete the picture and tell us your family uh, voyage and, and this book, and how is it connected with this? this well, it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned Jose Coser because I've translated Jose Coser. I, uh, some of my first translations were um, three of his poems. And I also began as a poet. Um, so I, I feel like I, I share a lot of similarities with Jessica. Um, I was born in Guatemala, and in 1955, um, and this was um, not for strictly political reason, reasons, but only laterally polit political reasons, my parents left Guatemala um, about six months after a coup uh, overthrew a legally uh, elected, um, what I would have called a socialist president. But um, Jaco Warmans, right? Yeah, Jaco Warmans. Um, we had a restaurant that was very close to the National Palace, um, and during the periods, the period leading up to um, Arbenz's decision to, to leave the country under great pressure by uh, Alan Dulles and John Foster Dulles and, and Eisenhower. Um, we were subjected to nightly uh, flights by airplanes uh, from the United States that uh, would be dropping off leaflets and um, uh, claiming that there would be civil war very soon. My parents had three children. They were very young. The restaurant was going bust because there were, the only people coming to the restaurant were, um, were newspaper men, mostly American newspaper men who were acting as spies for the U.S. government. And so my parents decided um, that they wanted to leave um, Guatemala and come to the United States. So they headed to the airport. They took a plane on, the, on their way to Chicago. The plane stopped in Miami, Florida. My father, who at the time was, um, was 58 years old, um, I was at that time five, um, decided that the, the climate in Miami was beautiful. And so he and my mother decided not to go to Chicago. Um, and they settled in, uh, in Miami. And about a month and a half later, um, the, the three boys were, were brought up um, to Miami. Um, and I, I was uh, four and a half. Um, I was you know, deeply upset by missing my my parents. Um, I was living with uh, an aunt and uncle. I didn't understand where my parents were. Um, I was living in a country that had um, a fabulous climate, volcanoes, uh, beans, uh, tamales, tortillas, and um, you know, five hours later, a plane lands in Miami, Florida, and I see my mother and father wearing shorts. <laughs> Uh, I had never seen my father um, ever wearing anything other than a suit and a uh, tie. And it's hot as hell. Uh, there's no air conditioning. And so I spent uh, my next um, 12 years in Florida um, jailed. Um, I applied to colleges, three colleges in the state of Massachusetts, um, and um, hadn't ever been to Massachusetts, but decided I just didn't want to be in Florida any longer. And um, fortunately, I was accepted by one of the three. And um, then I moved to New York in 1973. So I, I've been here about um, 35, 38 years. Um, 